All right, welcome back to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock. He's Marcellus Wiley. It's time to put on our thinking caps and pretend like Marcellus is smarter than the rest of us <laughs> just because he went to an Ivy League school. Ooh, John you. Merriman is back. I'm a journalist. We know that Marcellus went to Columbia, put on our thinking caps. Darnell, bring out uh, Marcellus' thinking cap. We're going to dive into some of the deeper uh -huh. issues of the day. I need tea and crumpets next time. Uh, I know we're starting with a little humor, but we're about to dive into a more serious subject. Yes, we are. Get your minds ready for that. All right, let's move to Sean Merriman's alma mater, the University of Maryland, where school president Wallace Lowe reversed course last night and fired head football coach DJ Durkin. The university's Board of Regents had initially decided to reinstate Durkin after an investigation of the program's culture following the death of offensive lineman Jordan McNair. That decision was met with fierce resistance with some of Durkin's own players walking out on him during a meeting and the student body planning campus-wide protests. Even Governor Larry Hogan weighed in saying, quote, I am deeply troubled by the lack of transparency from the Board of Regents and deeply concerned about how they could have possibly arrived at the decisions announced yesterday. I share the concerns of many Marylanders and believe they very strongly that more must be done to restore public trust. Maryland has made quite a mess here, but I'm not so, and some people will say this is embarrassing what's happened. I'm not that person. I, I will not say that. I don't really care how you arrive at the right decision. If you arrive at the right decision, I'm going to give you credit. Maryland made a mistake, I think, with the initial reinstatement. They course corrected very quickly. I don't believe this is embarrassing for Maryland. Agreed. It's not embarrassing. Um, the end justifies the means. So how you got there? Okay, uh, that's secondary to your arrival at this place. And where they are right now highlights to me that they still don't know how to assess what a toxic culture looks like. Uh, but I'll tell you why. Because culture is intangible. It's nothing you can really grab. You can see results from a culture, but you can't be in a culture and say, this is this type of culture. You can start to make some estimations, summations, but what you have to do is anticipate. What you have to do is see what these elements are that exist and know that your conditions before, you said they were toxic. You said you had a strength coach that obviously pushed the wrong buttons and pushed too hard, pushed too far. And then you have people who didn't respond appropriately in that moment of tragedy. And then you said after investigation, after investigation, that you know what that culture looked like, you know what you want your culture to look like, and then made a step in that direction. And then you didn't anticipate what was coming back your direction, which is going to be the same elements that you need to assess if you know what a culture is supposed to look like. You have not cured your ills. You have now just addressed symptoms of backlash and criticism. But there will be a day going forward when you think you have the proper culture. But you just showed that you don't have foresight. You just showed you don't know what consequence really looks like. So if I'm a player on that campus, if I'm anyone surrounding that, that environment, I'm starting to say, do you know which way is up? Because it shouldn't take 24 hours for you to go and flip your decision when you should have anticipated this backlash in the first place and made the decision based on that. You know what? It may, it may not be embarrassing for you, but it's embarrassing for me coming from PG County, Maryland. I grew up 20 minutes from the school. Uh, I committed to the University of Maryland as a junior. Uh, grew up there, born and raised. I know the area quite well. It's a sticky situation because a, a young man had lost his life. Uh, so you you kind of don't want to speak too much on the coach. You don't want to speak too much of the, the culture. I mean, first, you, you have to acknowledge that Jordan McNair lost his life. From the outside looking in and then, and then really finding out what happened in the situation, immediately, anybody who had a hand in it, trainers, anybody who physically seen his kid's condition running up to, to a 106-degree fever or the degree, whatever he had, he had, you know, temperature yep. he had, those people should immediately be gone right away. You saw it. You could have prevented it. This whole situation could have been preventable. Boom, that's done. You don't talk about it anymore. Then you run your investigation on the coach and the staff, the culture, and you see all these things going on. You made your decision. Before everything happened, you make your decision and you stick with it. Do not let the public or anyone else 
play a factor in what you have going on. If you don't know that bringing Coach DJ Durkin back in the building, that that's going to be a problem, I don't know what to tell you. We've seen it earlier this year with Urban Meyer. They made a decision. They brought him back. He's still getting backlash right now, but they already made a decision that this is our coach and we're moving forward with it. If, if you make the decision and you let this whole thing blow up in your face and you don't know this coming, it just shows that somebody mishandled this thing, not only from the start, but even when they had the chance to go back in it and look at it again and now make a decision. I'm from the area. Uh, I've watched them bring coaches in, in and out in the last few years. Randy Etzel and, you know, the coach, you know, they're bringing guys in and out, in, inside and out. You don't have any of the former players who went there. When we won games, that's from that Maryland, D.C., Virginia area. The guys who know the area, been there, know the culture, you don't have them as involved anymore because you're making decisions with coaches and personnel going forward without having anybody involved. Look at all the great schools, that, that before, Ohio State. Florida State, Florida, these guys all come back and be a part of their university and their school because they're involved in what happens. Did you like, do you agree with this decision to let DJ Durkin go or are you disappointed by it? I think that Durkin was a good coach going to, uh, to the, for the future for, the, for Maryland. I think he was a great recruiter. I think that he had a good energy about him originally coming there and being able to turn the program around. He wasn't good enough. He wasn't Urban Meyer status. If something like this could happen and them still move forward with him. If, it was Ur if Urban Meyer was there and they had a chance to win a championship, this might be a total, a, a, a total different conversation. We know the NFL, college, whoever, deal with more things with players, anybody else, off the field, troubles, whatever it is, if you can produce. If you can't produce, you're going to be out of there. So this thing not only was mismanaged and mishandled from the start, they went back in it and mishandled it again. Yeah. That's, that's what really where the problem come in at. That's my issue. Um, not the wins and losses, because there's a loss that you can never recover from, a loss of life. Um, so it's not parallel, analogous to me with Urban Meyer, per se. But I will go there to that mismanagement point. Oh, not only did they mismanage it in terms of response from the outside, but they mismanaged it internally. Think about it. The criticism, that avalanche that came in the 24 hours when they reinstated DJ Durkin, was something you should have anticipated. But you know, as we know, don't let your neighbors run your house. Like, if you say this is the way it's going to be... That's it. Everybody who comes in here is going to have to respect this or, okay, have your opinion on the outside. Okay. One, and here's the second point, then you give it to me, Willock. The Board of Regents is a 17-member board well. that is governed and appointed by the governor. The same governor in 24 hours who uh, obviously was not on the same page with his board of regents, correct? Yes. So look at that internal mismanagement. You have a board that is hired by one individual who turns on that same board's decision within 24 hours. Being very close to the Ball State program, I see that all the time. A board of trustees appointed by the governor, not on the same page as the people on campus. That's commonplace. But however, Marcel, as a parent, and yes. again, I just analogize the parent, I don't have a problem with Maryland making a mistake and then correcting. You never make a mistake with your child and then have to course correct very quickly. And again, th that's something you're highly invested in. You and your wife give a lot of thought to, but you can still make mistakes. I just think when I look at what they couldn't anticipate, which became very clear, is just the dissension within their own program. Mm. You've got kids fighting with other kids yeah. as over this suspension. You, you've got a player that is talking about he was beaten up or got in a fight, lost the fight or whatever, because the kids, the players are fighting amongst themselves. And, Sean, that was my position yesterday, and I stand with it today. DJ Durkin... To me, we're letting him off the hook. We want to blame Maryland, the Board of Regents, blah, blah. DJ Durkin should have been smart enough as a coach to realize he wasn't in position to lead this team moving forward. He should have worked out a, resig a resignation, in my opinion. I, I think so, too. And even going forward in his career, mm -hmm. you know, if he get another coaching job somewhere else, if you go and handle this particular situation correctly, maybe it might not have that big of a punch down the road, but you didn't. If you don't think that after a kid losing his life that you can walk back in that building and you had a hand or, or you could have prevented this 
or you could have went down to that strength conditioning coach after there were five or six or seven different complaints or went to one of your assistant coaches after there was complaints, and you can walk back in that building after your brother, one of your teammates, or best friend, whatever, had passed away, and you think you're going to walk back in that building it's going to be okay? You have to make a decision right then and there what you're going to do. And he did not handle it well. Thank you, Sean. Thank you, All right, bro. coming up, Derrick Rose looked like his old self last night, dropping 50 points on the Jazz. Is the former MVP back? Tim Hardaway joins us the show.